Are we back? We're back. Wow. How are we feeling, y'all? I feel I feel good. I feel good. You feel safe. good? You feel feel good? How do you yeah. feel? How do you feel, David? <laughs> In the crowd, how are we uh, feeling? I'm I see good a lot. I think that's great, David. We got cameras on David today. We got camera on a special guest. We'll, we'll get to know Marcelo. Do we get a camera on Marcelo? Sure do. That is great. That is great. And who's, who do we got in the audience? I see there's a lot of stuff going on here. All right, there's Vanessa. <laughs> so listen, just off top, I know that uh, someone hilarious called Patrick. If you, anyone who watched the PBD podcast, which I'm on most of the time, someone made a funny joke and they called him Patrick Late David. Oh, wow. It was pretty hilarious. That's not bad. And that, someone said, look, you guys are running five minutes late. Is it contagious? Who was re- I was ready. We had some technical dif- difficulties, but we're back. We're here. We're here. Back we five. didn't get canceled. They renewed us for an episode two. <laughs> I think we're going to be here for the long haul. But welcome back. Welcome back to the Southcast. Thank you guys for everybody uh, for tuning in. Uh, if you don't know me, uh, my name is Adam Sosnick, a.k.a. Saz Talks Money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. And, you know, I'm here to help you guys, you, you out there listening, build your wealth and save that money. And we got a, we got a lot of hot topics today. So before we get into the topics, David, Sir. just real quick, you're going to be here every week, are you not? Yes, I will be here every Give week. us one thing that the audience should know about you. Since you're going to be here every week, who are you, David? You Hang got on. a great mustache. You got a great personality. You don't have ten grand. We learned that last no, week. Don't, yeah. Not to call you out, but who are you? So uh, I'm the production coordinator here at Valley Tainment. Um, go ahead. Check, check, check. One, two. Is he on? Yes. Okay, go production ahead, sir. Production coordinator here at uh, Valley Tainment. Yeah. Um, run the show. I play music on the side. Um, I'm a fan of saving that money, <laughs> and that's why I'm on the show. That's awesome. And we have a special guest in the house. I'm going to let him introduce himself. But his name is Marcelo Hernandez. He's actually a writer here at Valuetainment. He helps us come up with some dimes that we're dropping. In my opinion, he is the, one of the top five comedians in Miami. And uh, Marcelo, introduce yourself. Yeah, hello. Thank you for having me, Sauce. Um, Marcelo, comedian. Uh, tw- I'm 24. I'm mean, mm-hmm. 23. Going to be 24 soon. Uh, yeah, young comedian. Very... Uh, very aggressive worker at comedy, I think. Uh, I've been doing it for five years. Started at mm-hmm. 18, kind of paid my dues, sold tickets on the street. Yeah. Um, I read How did we meet? How did we meet? We were at a comedy show. Yeah, I was we... starting a comedy club. Go ahead. Yeah, By we the were... way, David, they can't hear you. They're saying that they can't hear you. We, um, we were at a comedy show in uh, Miami, Speak Fridays. Mm-hmm. This is a pretty big comedy show. I was just going to hang out and check out the scene. Uh, I would go everywhere by myself, just kind of go watch other comedians and see how I kind of compared to them. Mm -hmm. I was in college in Cleveland at the time. I was just visiting Miami, and uh, Sosnick was there, and it was like, you know, there's water bottles and stuff. There's like, uh, I don't know know what I was grabbing, but you were like, oh, what's up, man? We just kind of started talking, and then um, I told you I did comedy very aggressively. I did it a lot. Mm -hmm. You were like, okay, well, I'm thinking of starting a thing. I go, cool. If you ever start the thing, I'd love to do it. I won't let you down, right? And then uh, you gave me a chance at like 19 years old or something at your, mm-hmm. the show that you ended up starting at, an, at a cool club in Miami Beach. Cool club, gang. Okay? I'm talking like Miami Vice yeah. Lights. I'm people. not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. Yes, he's a cool mom. Yeah. And um, yeah, dude. And then from then on, I, I had a decent set the first time ever. And Killed then you, you kept having me back. People kept asking me, how the hell did this kid get on the show? And uh, it was because I met Sauce. You know, I was grinding in the dark, and then I got to got to shine a little bit. Mm-hmm. And now, who are you opening up for every day, every, every week? Every no, no, no. I mean, all the time. Easy, who are you opening up for? Easy, easy, easy. I'm I'm starting to get a little work on the road here and there, um, sporadically. I'm doing a lot of work in Miami. I'm getting on stage a good deal, and then every once in a while, I get to open for uh, uh, Tim Dillon, who's Tim a, Dillon, who's a big comedian. He's a top ten comedian, from what I hear. Yes, man. He's, he's uh, on Rogan. You see him. He's got his own podcast. What's the name of his podcast? Very talented. The Tim Dillon Show. Tim Dillon Show. Very talented guy. Very thankful that uh, he's been able to take me on the road a couple times. Sick. So yes, sir. This is that attainment that we're looking for. We're welcome to value attainment, guys. Real quick, I see that we got over a hundred people on right now. Just give a quick thumbs up if the volume is good. I see people commenting on the volume. I'm not sure if they're talking about. David's volume and audio or the overall show because that'd be a problem. Um, 
Parvis says, Marcelo, dude, let's drop some comedy stuff. <laughs> okay, let's have fun. We love to. All right, so they can hear you. All right. So, David, they can't hear you, but they, uh, they, uh, they can hear Marcelo and I, but we'll work on David. Comedy helps. Money is scary. I need help. <laughs> I'm 63. This is Sherry says. Only 60K saved up in New York City's apartment. My retirement help. All right, we can help you. Tim Dillon's the goat. That silly white boy. Got a lot of thumbs up coming in. We got a lot of thumbs up coming in. So that means we're live. All right, cool. Let's get into the show today. Marcelo's going to be dropping some dimes. David, hopefully, if he figures out his audio, he'll be weighing in. But um, here are the topics that we're going to be discussing. Rihanna's a billionaire. Rihanna is a billionaire. We're going to be talking about working on your personal brand. How much money should you have saved up for retirement? These NBA massive contracts. Big money, big money, big, big money. Big money, big money. Players getting paid and how owners pay for them. How do these owners afford all these players? We're going to learn about that. We're going to talk about Kanye's new album and how much money he is spending to produce this album and how much money he's paying in rent and where he's living. And finally, where Robert Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad, thinks you should be putting your money. Let's talk money. We get. We ready? Let's do it, baby. All right, cool. Let's get into it. David, how you feeling? Good. All right. You look stressed. You look stressed. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You don't have headphones on. I can't hear you. I can't hear you at all. Yeah, the mic was on at first, and then uh, yeah. it was just low, and then now it's not on. All right. But it's good. Check it's only episode one, two. two. Technical yeah, difficulties. Like now you're there. Now you're now there. I'm He's back. getting there. All this right. is where I was at the beginning. Yeah, so. The button, didn't. All right, cool. Okay. Well, cool. <laughs> And I hear I hear some audio in the background. Is someone's volume up? <laughs> Let's just move. we're running yeah. it. Sauce is a uh, very yeah. sensitive ears. Hey, here's Congratulations. What's going on. Great comment. Don't be Antoine Walker. All right, let's get into the first story of the day. Rihanna officially becomes a billionaire. Crazy. Rihanna, we got some Rihanna fans out there in the house today. Rihanna fans. I love Rihanna. I love Rihanna. Okay. Not for the music. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, here's a Forbes article. Forbes names Rihanna the richest female musician. Actually, there's a USA article as well. Rihanna shines bright like a diamond. Shines bright like a diamond. Did I do it okay? It's not bad. Not bad. All right. And as Marcelo says, she is the perfect mix of hot, mysterious, and talent. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. Let's, can we get th thumbs up out there if you're a Rihanna fan? Thumbs down if you could care less about Rihanna. I'd I mean, like to see what the crowd has to and, say. And about regardless that. of how you feel, put some respect on it. Just, she just became a billionaire. Respect, you understand? With a K put at the end. Put some respect on that. All right, so here's the deal Forbes announced Wednesday that Rihanna joins the ranks of Oprah Winfrey as one of the richest entertainers in the world. The publication estimates that her net worth stands at $1.7 billion, with most of it coming from her cosmetic brand, Fenty. Beauty, we'll touch on that. The singer turned entrepreneur whose real name, get it, is Robin Fenty. That explains the Fenty. There you go. She launched Fenty Beauty in 2017 in partnership with luxury goods conglomerate LVMH. Do you know what LVMH stands no for? No idea. Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. Do you know who owns LVMH? Is it, is it Hennessy or Hermes? Hennessy. Hennessy. Oh. That Henny. Interesting. Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. Mm. Massive, massive company. And the owner of that company is is is, is, is from France. You're right. He is neck and neck with Jeff Bezos as the richest man in the world. His name is Bernard Arnault. Mm. Neck Bernard and neck. Bernard Arnault. I've never heard of him. Exactly. But you've never. heard of Louis Vuitton? Yes, I have. Have you heard of Moet Hennessy? Yes, I have. Have you have you heard No, of, I haven't. Yeah. Have you heard of Gucci? Yes. Have you heard of Chanel? Yes. Yeah, he owns all that shit. No <laughs> way. Get all out of, of here. All of it. All of it. Could it Pull I, up a list. I thought it was like 10 Pull different up people. LVMH. What are they all? Holdings. Own? Pull yeah. that up. We'll talk about this. But obviously, they're partnered up with this, um, El um, with Fenty. So he's the richest man in the world. He's neck and neck with Bezos. When Bezos has a good week, he's number one. When Bezos has a bad week, LV what? LVMH. How many I, this letters? This is unbelievable David. that you are a person David. and you don't know about this. <laughs> like I, I, the, the fact that you have a pulse and you don't know what LVMH is is shocking. Yeah. It's, it goes back to the Pull 10 grand question again. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> yes, God, yeah. David. I bet you um, he knows a local tattoo shop. So <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So uh, for those of you that don't know, David has an amazing arm sleeve that, that um, Marcelo keeps asking him, how much money would you have if you didn't have those tattoos? Yeah, it's about three <laughs> the back and forth thing. <laughs> so anyway, he keeps passing Bezos. Um, I see a lot of thumbs. Let's see. Let's get All right. So Servando, thumbs up. Parviz, thumbs up. 
Johnny Amaro, thumbs up. Uh, Luis Alfa Hernandez, lots of dollar signs. Fabian, thumbs up. Moises, thumbs up. Yard work, lawn care services, thumbs down. Not a fan of Rihanna. Chad, thumbs up. Love from Brazil. We love Brazil. Uh, Marcelo, amazing soccer player. When I think of Brazil, I think soccer. And, <laughs> and also the music. What's the music out of Brazil? Uh, there's a there's so a little many. bit of everything. There's funk, there's samba, there's a little bit of everything. But they have a, a Bossa specific Nova. sound. Bossa, Bossa Nova, Nova that's as well, what I'm talking yeah. about. All right, you're pulling up LVMH? Where are yeah, we at Yeah, LVMH, LVMH. Just LVMH, David. It's How up, many letters up. do you need? It's holdings. Up, Look up LVMH okay, Holdings. LVMH Holdings. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, her brand, Rihanna, covers everything in the makeup category. That's what this Fenty brand is. Um, this is the part that makes you think, actually. It's like most of her money, do you think most of her money comes from, let's ask the audience, do you think most of her money comes from this Fenty brand or from her music? She's, I mean, uh, the brand. music. I would say brand. You would say the brand? Yeah. Do you think the most of the money of this one, what she's what? worth $1.7 billion. Would you say that most of the money comes from her brand, Fenty, or her music? Now, I mean... I'll give you a couple of my favorite while we pull this up because David. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Uh, so David, just, just you see the first. You see the, the go back, David. Go back, David. You see the first question. It says what companies are owned by uh, LVMH. Yeah, just kind of press that, that yeah. and then there we have a little bit of a yeah. list. There we go. Louis Vuitton, Dior. They yeah. offered to buy Tiffany. I mean, uh, this. Even guy if you is... hit images, I'm sure you'll see all the names of companies. But they. So anyway. Um, before I reveal yeah. this answer, they're saying brand, 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 yeah, uh, brand, brand, brand. brand. Everyone says brand. Okay. I, and, but I'll be honest. I'll be yeah. honest. As a like, just from no, a knowledge perspective, mm -hmm. I definitely know more about Rihanna's music Absolutely. than about her brand. You know what I mean? Is that yeah, just because well, you're a guy? The last time you wore makeup. Yeah, you're right. But I mean, I mean, if you you probably buy makeup for your girlfriend and stuff. I never really thought like my on Mother's Day. I'm not thinking Fenty. You know what I mean? I'm think I'm not thinking about that All stuff. Right, well, I have a list of my favorite songs. Before I give this answer, I'm just gonna be. I have a list of my favorite Rihanna songs. I don't know if okay. you have any top. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. When I think of Rihanna, here are the songs I think of. Work, 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 yeah, work, work, absolutely. gonna make it, make it, work, work, work. Sick, right? Are you kidding me? Um, oh, na, na, what's my name? Oh, na, na. It's a banger. Sure. That's, banger. That's, banger. That's with Drake, right? Banger. Um, umbrella, Ella, Ella, eh, 2000s. Eh, eh. I mean, that was Iconic probably one of her first hits. Yeah, dude. Right? That's, um, yeah. We um, definitely we definitely listened to that song in two very different places. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the club. You were in elementary. School. I was yeah no I was at I was at someone's birthday party. Yeah. Sixth grade. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, how about this one? <laughs> Bitch, better have my money. Ooh, yeah. Savage, Are you kidding dude. me? Makes me want to run through a wall. We might have been the same Makes you want to run through a wall. And this one stands personal for me. I wish I could play it, but there's a song called S O S. S O S. Please somebody help me. S O S. No, nothing. Yeah, of course, Rihanna? absolutely. I you do want know to see this how, song. Yeah, of course. I, I kind of kept, kept going. I kind of kept going. I don't know that song. So anyway, you don't know that song? No, no, no. Wow. Yeah, so that's that. See, that's 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 why David David's such an yeah. enigma. No, anyway. no, no knowledge of LVMH. I'd love to, I'd love to hear what the people got. No, no. <laughs> but he knows about the SOS yeah, song exactly. by Rihanna. Great shit. So we, a lot of people are saying the brand. Uh, I just sang some of my favorite songs. Uh, six 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 sleeper cell says stop singing. Oh, you know what? That's the, that might be the end of my music career. <laughs> that's it. One bad comment, and I quit. That's it. Get off stage. Anyway, here's the answer, and this is the part that makes you think. Thank you, Marcelo. Uh, Forbes estimates that 1.4 billion of her net worth comes from the Fenty Beauty brand. Okay, mm. what's 1.4 into 1.7? What? Most of it is what that is. 85, 90 percent. What is that? Yeah, I don't know. Something Patrick like Bethany we'll we'll would get, be like 82.7, <laughs> 244. Like carry the pie. Like he would know that. <laughs> um, I'm just I'm I'm estimating, and 270 million comes from her um, music and acting and so anyway rihanna is a billionaire and she is worth 1.7 billion thoughts david thoughts man i mean initially it's just that's a that's like such a ridiculous number what do you do with money at that point like it's just you at what point do you just win and just oh, she you won. need more money she won you know who lost chris brown hey Loser. yeah he definitely lost that. i do like his music deuces but i mean it's just weird to listen to Chris Brown now. You're not going to do better than Rihanna if you want hot, no, 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 no. money, no, 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 sexy yeah. music, talented. We have Vanessa here. Vanessa, do you want to weigh in on this? Are you a Rihanna fan? Yeah, I am. I saw her live like eight years ago. It was very, very good. Nice. And if you recognize her voice, she is the audio engineer and producer of the PBD Hello, podcast. People. Yes, she is. She is from Venezuela. Yes, I am. Yeah. Also great editor. Marcelo, question for you. Take your pick. Music. Music. Oh, God. Rihanna 
or Beyonce? Who you got? Right. Like I um like I'm Simon Cowell. Like I know anything about music. <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, I honestly I think um dude I might take uh, Beyonce on this. Mm. I might take Beyonce. I like old school. I listen to a little bit of Destiny's Child, I'll be completely honest. Oh yeah. With you. Uh, did Sometimes I ever tell I'm... you my Kelly Rowland story? You did tell me your Kelly oh, Rowland wow. story. I had a moment with Kelly Rowland. Like when Saz went in his party days, me and Kelly Rowland got sat at the singles table at a wedding. Oh boy. Me and Kelly Rowland and my friend Jono's wedding. And we had a moment. We were the singles you at the table. We had a moment. Kelly Rowland and your boy Saz. How long was that moment? It was more than a minute. It was a few minutes. We were dancing. <laughs> we were singing. We, we had a night together. We like we hung out all night. It was wow. great. Um, Vanessa, Beyonce or Rihanna? Beyonce. I also saw her live, oh but I feel God. like her vocals are way better. I'm okay. Sorry. David? Uh, I'm just going to say... Um I'm going to say Rihanna, just for sake okay. of being yeah. different. I'm 100% Rihanna all day, every day, every damn day. Bitch, better have my money. Hey. Be- okay, uh, no disrespect to Beyonce. Is that my bugaboo? <laughs> my, my, my bugaboo. You're a bugaboo. My bugaboo, okay. Th- this thing? Single ladies? What do you mean this thing? This thing? Single ladies this, yeah. is one of the biggest. You better put a ring are on you, it. Are you pulling a Kanye out there? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> all, all respect. One of respect. the greatest albums of all time. Okay. <laughs> respect. No, but yeah, respect the single ladies. I res- come on. Dude, okay. come on, right. dude. You better put a ring on it. Girls yeah. are still saying that. Th- this move? Whatever that thing is, <laughs> do not yeah. ever. Don't do that disrespect. Again. Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't have a lot of wiggle room. Now, over maybe here, in guys. the in the comments, what's worse, his dancing or his singing? Someone has to say. <laughs> it's definitely my singing. I can actually dance. I used to kill bar mitzvahs back in the day. Anyway, I'm seeing what's going on here. Um, Rihanna, Beyonce, Beyonce. Anyway, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Beyonce, or Rihanna, or I'll throw a curveball. J Lo. I'm thinking, who are the biggest female you know, artists in the world? Rihanna and Beyonce never did a song together. Never like been on a song together. No, they now, compete. I, I they probably, compete, I can probably, I can nearly guarantee you that Beyonce makes more money on her music mm-hmm. than on oh, absolutely other yeah. stuff. Does Beyonce have a personal brand that she's done? I feel like, like she Rihanna? has to. Like, I mean, you would assume. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't. It's not you know front page news. Right, anyway, so what we're learning here to wrap this all <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, the learning. What what can what can these people take away from this? That, saucy the, thing? Here, here's the deal: the personal brand. Is that new wave? Yeah. Right. So Absolutely. the music she's made a couple hundred million. Not bad, Rihanna. Not but bad. But the majority of her 1.7 billion is on this personal brand, and it just happens to be makeup. So, um, working on a personal brand that's big. Go ahead, Marcelo. Just crazy that just crazy to think that Rihanna's skin has made her more money than her voice. Like she's given <laughs> she's given such an amazing talent, you know, golden pipes. But the way that she looks has really made people go crazy. And then I agree. she's made billion dollars. Yeah. And she's making people look good. Anyway, she's making people look good. She makes you enjoy her music, make you dance. Even Saz, you know, don't try to do the Beyonce dance. But Rihanna, damn. I'd put a ring on that if just to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to, nip, to nip that in. That personal brand is the new wave, huh, Saz? So the personal brand is the new wave. All right, let's segue into this next story about speaking of personal brand. Um, here's, another, here's another story that actually came out this week. The NBA draft was this past week. We covered that on the, the first Saws cast. But here's a player who got drafted. He was drafted by the Washington Wizards. His name is Corey Kispert. And he gave his advice on the NIL, which we covered last week in the podcast, which is the name, image, and likeness. And he says, here's advice to all um, you folks out there. He says, spend less time playing video games and more time building your brand. This is an article from Market Watch. He says, but the article says the so-called NIL or name image likeness he has that has created the chance for college athletes to cash in on their personal brand while still maintaining eligibility for college sports. But the new rules also open the opportunities for companies to take advantage of these 18 and 19 year olds navigating the landscape for the first time. So, you know, I play a little ball. Nobody was trying to give me any money at the time when I was playing football in North Carolina. Um, but um, you yeah. probably could you probably could have made a little bit of gas money, you know, just like a little bit selling bagels on K. Who knows? I could have done. done something like that. But here's uh, here's what Corey Kispert has to say. He says he had a business major and he, he, he worked part way through his MBA while in Gonzaga and uh, Gonzaga did, did Gonzaga I think won the NCAA championship this year. The, They're always in it, those yeah. guys. They're, They're always, always in it. it. I don't but know. They, they actually a... won it this year on a half-court, last-second shot. Insane. So he advised college athletes to work on, work with an expert to vet out any contract proposal or hidden or hard-to-decipher terms. 
that could hurt an athlete's ability to profit on their own brand. So that's advice to college athletes. But what can you take from this? And I actually have some thoughts on this. He says, I would have spent a lot less time playing video games with my buddies and a lot more time building my personal brand if the NAL had been around when he was in school. So that was his advice to other college athletes. But I think something that has that has shaped my life, I think really in my mid thirties, now I'm 40, someone said to me, they go, Saz, invest your time, don't spend your time. Invest your time, don't spend your time. So I was the king of spending time in my twenties and in my thirties. I was partying yeah. in South Beach, I was in like seven fantasy football leagues. I'm going out. I'm bullshitting. I'm just chatting. I'm just, you know, just like spending. I never was a video game person, but everyone has their hobbies that they like to do. I get it. Essentially, what he's saying is work on something that will bring you returns in the end. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that play video games. They're like, what do you mean you can make money from video games? Yeah, okay. I was just about to say that. Okay. Yeah. There are people that can do that. But that's a very small few. Would you agree? Yes. How many percentage of people, if there's a million playing video games, how many people are making money from it? It's got to be the same as college sports. It's got to be like spending 8%, money. Like, like a single yeah, gotta, I would say way less than that. that. So like 2%. Yeah. They're actually making money. Yeah. And you guys play video games? I, 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 I dab. I'm you the dabble. king of FIFA. Like I will destroy FIFA. you in FIFA. How much money have you made from playing FIFA? Well, ask, uh, what, do you play video games? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also play FIFA. I think me and this kid need to play FIFA. Me and David need oh, to play FIFA. We need to get a challenge. Dude, let's okay. play it. Here's our first, Stop this whole thing. Let's here's our first it. challenge of the week. You, you guys don't know David from Adam or Marcelo from Adam, literally. Yeah. Just based on their confidence and their tone, we'll each give them five seconds to say why they'd win. Who do you think would win a FIFA matchup, David or Marcelo? Uh -huh. Go ahead. Give us your pitch. All right, so uh, last year I worked from home, right? And I, yeah. did, I was a legal videographer, so I just had to set up the thing, hit record, and then I could do whatever I wanted. Boom. What did I do? I played FIFA, dude. I played FIFA eight hours a day. There it is. There's Ultimate eight hours a day? David, Division one. invest your time, spend your time. Now, college, now speaking of college athletes, a little known fact about my friend Marcelo, he was a college soccer player, college soccer player, and uh, okay. Marcelo, why would you beat David in FIFA? Um, I love how David brought up working from home as if he's the only one that got to work from home last year. Who didn't work from home yeah, last year? No. Just my point that oh, I had a lot of extra time. Lower the AC. Um, <laughs> it's hot. It's hot in here. Lower the AC. Sweat, um, sweating over here. Go sweat. ahead. So why would you win? Um, I think I would win um, because I have more experience actually playing soccer. You know what I mean? So I think there's some things that he, nothing. That he, nothing, that he may not be thinking about that I know that he may not be. You know, I have some tactics that maybe none of these kids that just spend their time on a joystick may not know about. Okay. Let's, All right. let's run it up, Let's dude. just see let's what the it. comments say. Eight hours a day is a lot, though. I didn't do that. I was yeah. spending time, you know, building yeah. my personal brand. Do you understand? Oh, dude? I had zero comment. personal brand. <laughs> so zero Marcelo, personal brand. actually, comedian, built his personal brand, kills it on TikTok, kills it on Instagram, opens for a lot of comedians, especially Tim Dillon. And you have worked on your personal brand, I, I, you know, a little bit. Yeah, in college, I mean, I quit. So I quit my college soccer team, uh, my sophomore year, mm -hmm. to become a comedian. I sat down in the office with the coaches and was like, "Hey, I think I'm going to be a comedian." They were like, "What?" <laughs> and yeah. then they were like, "You're going to have to tell the guys." I had to tell the guys. I cried in front of the guys. I go, "I'm sorry, I'm letting you guys down, but I want to mm -hmm. be a comedian." And uh, it's you know, it's obviously paid off. And you know, at my age, I'm getting a little bit of work. But all right, so work on your personal brand. I think the the you know, overall here, why do you work on your personal brand? So you can monetize it, so you can have a sense of, 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 of accomplishment in what you're doing, something bigger than yourself, being, being like, this Saz Talks Money isn't a personal brand. I worked in finance for 15 years, I still do. I deal with estate planning and in life insurance and investments, but I recognized, you know, everyone I deal with is in their 60s and they're older and they're wealthier, and I recognized there was a niche in the millennial marketplace, Gen Z marketplace, that like they don't learn this stuff in school. So I said, let me work on this personal brand, Saz, Saz Talks Money, and then boom, five years later, I got my own show here on Valuetainment. So it does pay off. Personal brand does take time. All right, and I think that's what this guy, Corey Kispert, is basically saying, is like, yo, you know, you can play video games, you could spend your time, that's cool, or you can invest your time, and you can work on your personal brand. And we're starting to see a lot of college athletes get paid the name that comes to mind is Masterpiece Son, who got paid like two million bucks. I don't even know what team he's on. 
you're starting to see people like the quarterback for Alabama. He got paid an absurd amount of money just because yeah. he's, he's going to be out doing his thing out there commercial. So working on your personal brand ain't no joke. Um, and no matter what job you got, you know what I mean? Even if you're a lawyer or anything, I think working on your personal brand, especially in today's social media age, I think it can bring you more business. You know what I mean? If you find a way to sell yourself when you're not in the office, right? So if you went, you know, you're out and about, you're on the street, whether it's, you know, your business card is cool or you have a QR code that's cool. There's a lot of ways that you can kind of feed your business when you're outside of the office. And I think that's what this guy's saying is like when you're not practicing Mm -hmm. your sport, whether your sport is law or landscaping, whatever your real job is, mm -hmm. when you're outside, work on your personal brand. All right, so here's, here's a question. This might be a dumb question. I don't think it is, but is a personal brand just AKA get on social media and build your social media following? That's what a personal brand is. Like, I mean, you can't have a personal brand and no social media, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's definitely the most useful one. But, you know, some people can do it on print. You know, if you live in a community where it's a small town and everybody's reading the newspaper, maybe the newspaper is your move. I mean, who knows? Mm -hmm. it, dep it depends on where you're at. But gotcha. in today's day and age, I mean, social yeah, media is the media, easiest okay. one. It's cheap. It's free. It's cheap and it's free. Uh, real quick, uh, we talked about soccer. Yep. We're starting to uh, get people uh, oh, weigh in on this. Big line. Big line here. Something that we have written down here. Your net worth yep. will always be more important yep. than your, than high, your high score. score. Yeah, I was going to get that. I was going to get that. Your okay. net worth, um, what I always say is actually focus on your net worth, not your Netflix. Mm. Okay? Amen. Okay. Your net worth, not your Netflix. You hear that? That's a sauce guy. tip. Yeah, that's a little sauce tip. Focus on net worth, not your Netflix. I say that all the time. In this case, we'll use it in a video game reference. Your net worth is more important than a high score in FIFA. No, I don't know, is that a high school a High thing? division, whatever. <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, it's a tough one for me. I'm since not. we're on soccer, and before we transition to the next story, I know that you guys are big soccer players. We're going to have a huge game, huge game of FIFA, but I heard there was some breaking news today, like literally 10 minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, I just, I found out about right Lionel Messi. The show. What's the story? This is just Lionel Messi in Barcelona, the biggest breakup since, you know, Brad and Angelina. This is just Amen. a big deal. This yeah. is a huge deal. He's been with them his whole career since he was a boy. Lionel Messi actually grew up in Argentina. He had he wouldn't grow. He had like problems with his growth. Mm -hmm. And FC Barcelona thought he was so good at soccer that they took him into La Masia and paid for all his medical La expenses. The academy, La Masia is the uh, academy. La Masia is the academy. Yeah, sorry for those that don't know. And uh, they basically, you know, have had him his whole life, and they've given him everything. His family. I mean, they Barcelona, Spain, the soccer team. Yes. And okay. today he announced that there were some financial talks and this and that, and he's not coming back. ESPN posted it's the end of an era. I mean, it's mm -hmm. there's going to be Twitter's got to be going insane right now. Yeah. So he's been, how old is Messi? I'm guessing he's in 34, his 32, 35, 32, how, uh, 33, 33. Yeah. How long has he been with the Barcelona? His team? entire life since he was a little boy. Since he's he's 34 old. years old, okay. and uh, he's been with Barcelona forever. Forever. Since 2004. So, uh, but in 2003 is when he joined them. Uh, 2000. Oh, my God. 2000 is when he joined them. He's been with them for 21 wow. years. Wow. Wow. There you go. I see in the comments. I'm sorry. Let me just apologize. I don't want to get canceled. I called it soccer. I'm sorry. I know it is football. It's football. It's a football. It's a beautiful game <laughs> okay. of football. But I, but I, I guys, I, I got to come clean. Oh, boy. I'm American. No, I love America. We're really going to yes, debate sir. this right now? I love America. And yeah. I call football football, and I call soccer soccer. I said it. Did I you did know, it. Actually, I soccer it. originated yeah. in Great Britain. It was something yeah. that they originated. They changed it up and started calling yeah. football. It's actually the, the fact that. American football is actually called football is so stupid. Um, American it's, also, what yeah. does American mean in the sentence American football? Like violence? Like, I, I, <laughs> what does it mean? What is the concussions? Concussions? Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's the complaint a lot. A lot of people have when they don't like soccer. They go, Yeah, I like soccer. It's just not enough concussions. Not like, enough. I need more brain people damage out for the season. A hundred percent. Also, there's one guy that kicks the ball in American football. One Two. guy. There's a punter. There's a punter too. The kicker and a punter. One and a half guys. And <laughs> it's a different guy. It's a different guy. Usually. A kicker and a punter are different. Yes. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> he just learned something. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Oh, one of the biggest podcasts on the planet right now is Pat McAfee. He was a punter. If you tried to call him a kicker, he'd wring your neck right now. Oh, so he could really. kick. He could kick. He could yeah. kick. I mean, he was a punter. But he. But how did he start? As a soccer player. <laughs> yes, That's absolutely. How he they All wear right. soccer cleats. That's true. So, anyway, we're talking about building your personal brand. We're talking about uh, supplementing your income. 
And let's transition to this next story. So learn how to supplement your income and save some of that money. So once I saw this story, I said, I got to share it with my people. I got to share it with my people. I do this for the people. You think I'm doing this for myself? I'm good. You're chilling. I'm chilling. You know, we covered it on the first one. I'm chilling. This is my chilling. I want to help you guys. So here it is. Here's an article from CNBC. Here's how much money you should have saved for retirement by age 30, 40, 50, and beyond. Hey, maybe we should get um, everybody in the comments. Drop your age. Let's yeah. see. Let's see what the numbers are. Let's see uh, how much you should have saved. Drop your I age. I agree. Drop your age. I would love to see how old you are. And if you're willing to do this, drop your age and how much you have saved up. Drop your age and how much you have saved up. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's okay, see it. let's see what we got. Let's see what our people have to say out there. So let's get into this. So look, before I get started, you guys are dropping your age. You're dropping your net worth, potentially. What do you have saved for retirement? Amazing. Remember... These are just numbers to use as aspirational milestones, okay? Don't get too thrown off here. Where'd Marcelo go? Phone call. Oh, my goodness. All right, yep. so by age Vanessa's 30. Vanessa's in the seat now. Oh, hot seat. <laughs> All right, let's see some age. We got 20, 30, 17, Ben, uh, 33, 38, 29, 33, 26, 17, 63, respect, 22, 18. We got someone from Norway. Benjamin from Norway. Kai is going to be so excited about that. 14. Benny getting started early. Jay's 27. He's got 66 grand uh, saved up. Respect. Tech 19. Servando. 30. 10 grand. German Garcia. 20 and a 28K net worth. Benjamin Sather. uh, I think that says 50,000 KR. I'm not sure what that, that is, but respect to you. 29, 28, 45. All right, so we have people all the way from 14, 15, as much as 63. The common age seems to be somewhere in their 20s and 30s. But honestly, guys, thank you guys so much for even being here to listen to this. This show is about you. So let's get into some of these aspirational milestones. So by the age 30, you should have your annual income in savings. So by age 30, if you make 50 grand a year, you should have 50 grand saved up in your retirement. Saving for retirement. So if you make so if you make eighty thousand a year by age thirty, you should have eighty thousand sitting in the bank. Let's just do some quick numbers. By age thirty five, you should have twice your annual savings. So if you're thirty five, you should have if you make fifty grand a year, a hundred grand saved up, okay? If you make eighty grand as an example, hundred and sixty grand. That's just basic math. Okay? By age forty, you should have three times your annual income. So if you make fifty grand a year, that's one hundred and fifty grand in savings. If you make eighty grand a year, that's the example they use, two hundred and forty thousand in savings. You get the point. Now here's the deal: when you're finally ready to retire, and they say the retirement age is at age sixty-seven, you should have ten times Ooh, your gosh. annual income. That's Whoa. not crazy. By age sixty-seven, if you make seems like you, a lot to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like really. No, okay. So if you make 50 grand a year, you work yeah. for 40 years. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, you should have a half a million saved up for retirement. Mm-hmm. If you make 80 grand a year, you should have 800 grand saved up for retirement. If you make 100 grand a year, 10 times that is a million. All mm-hmm. right, we, on last episode, we talked about how much money you need to put away in your um, retirement accounts to actually get to a million. So that's how much you need to retire comfortably. Retire Got comfortably. It. Now that's you know. So here's a little here's a little gem. So a- anything when it comes to retirement, there's something called the three-legged stool. Maybe try to pull this up. Maybe three-legged stool. See what comes up. Now let's just test out his memory. A lot of memory. stools coming. A lot of stool. Three-legged stool. So they call it the three-legged stool of retirement. Welcome back, Marcel. They call it the three-legged stool of retirement. And here are the three things that you need to have. Number one yeah, is a pension. This is a three-legged stool of retirement. Number one is a pension. Now, here's the deal. Most people don't have pensions these days. Maybe if you're a police officer, you work for the government, maybe you're a teacher, you have a pension. I would say less than 5% of the population has a pension. That's number one. That's one leg of the stool. Did you find this? You just hit yeah, images, gotta, bro. Uh, just I hit images. The, number two leg. is Social Security. Number two is Social Security. And the, anyone want to guess how much the average person gets from Social Security each month? Take a guess. How each much? month? Yeah, Social Security. You're retired, you get Social Security. <sighs> No clue. Uh, a grand? Grand's close. Yeah, I like think a, at most uh, it's two grand. Yeah, not yeah. a bad, not a bad guess. Fifteen hundred, yeah, yeah. two grand. So maybe you're getting twenty grand a year in social security. Not a lot of money. For okay. Sure. So that's a t- that's the first two legs of the stool. Pension, social security. Third leg of the stool, which I assume you're pulling up an image. Just hit three legged stool image. 
is your personal savings. That's everything we're talking about here. Here we go. So back to this article. Here we go. Three-legged stool retirement. Was I right? Social yeah. security, pension, and personal savings. See, you know, uh, you know, not just a hat rack up no. here. <laughs> There's actually, you know, some brains going on here. a thing or two. No, a thing or two. It's something called the three-legged stool retirement. So a lot of people don't have pensions. I don't have a pension. Do you have a pension? No. Marcelo, they get pensioned at the comedy world? Um, no, dude. Not yeah. at all. No. That's no. different from that. <laughs> not at all. Vanessa, pension? No. No. Okay. Pensionless. Social security? You know, do you think Social Security is going to be there for you when you retire? Dude, I don't, I don't know. You don't not, even know. Do you this think rate, Social Security is going to be there for you when you retire? Marcelo. I don't know where it would come from. It would come from the government. That's where it comes the, from. And, and the, they just do it automatically? I don't, I don't, oh, I, you pay into it. I have, I have no idea. Okay. Well, well, maybe maybe next episode we'll talk about Social Security a little Ma bit. Maybe that's a good idea. I have uh, no idea what that is. You have no idea what it is? It's I retirement. Really... It's retirement. The government pays you to retire. You pay in. When you get a paycheck, they take out. Taxes, obviously, and some yeah. of that goes to Social what's, Security. What's social about that, right? That's my question, right? This I'm a is, words guy. Well, <laughs> I start to think here. I go, I go. Well, social Security. Maybe I'm a funny guy. I have a lot of Social Security. Yeah. When I get into a social situation, I feel secure. I feel like I'm okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm not gonna ruin the yeah. moment. Well, I feel like I'm gonna kill it. Awesome. I do agree with you. You too. You, you have a lot it. of Social Security I yourself. Got so, I got social skills. I got not. We're not talking about social skills. We're not talking about social media. We're talking about Social Security. Um, I believe that the Social Security was started. Uh, FDR's New Deal. This was back after World War II. Um, you know, so people could retire comfortably. And basically, the, the whole thing with Social Security is they basically they said after age 65, you maybe it's 62, sorry. 62, you can start receiving Social Security benefits. The problem was back then, you know, 80 years ago, life expectancy was age 65. So they said you'd live for a few years, and the government would give you money for a few years, then you'd die. Now, people live to age 80, 90, 100, no problem. So there's people living on Social Security for 20, 30 freaking years. You're not, and, and, and we talked about Jeez. how much the average Social Security check. You're like a grand, uh, you know, 1,500 bucks, 2,000. Yeah. You want to live on 30 years of your life on 20 grand a year? Not a good look. Yeah, not a so good that look. brings me back to what we're basically talking about over here is your personal savings, bro. Absolutely. So this is, you know, we talked about uh, by age 30, you, you got to have your annual income and savings. By age, by age 35, you need to have twice your annual income and savings. And by age 40, you need to have three times. And by the time you're ready to retire at age 67, you need to have 10 times your annual income. Do you have that? Are you working on that? Are these numbers you're aware? Now, Marcelo, I'm sure you have a funny comment here where this is what you need to retire comfortably now i'm yes. thinking you i just want to know how how much do i need to retire uncomfortably sauce <laughs> i mean i don't care if it's a little rough the ac doesn't have to be kicking yeah. you know i can keep the place at 76 and i think i'll survive um what do you think i think i think um being that you're 23 being uncomfortable is very much what you're used to you ever see an uncomfortable <laughs> 75-year-old? It's not a nice place. Yeah, it's not a nice place. But what, if, not what, if I, what if I just stay in shape, right, and I minimize how much I sweat, right? If I just stay in shape, if I'm a 72-year-old but I got abs, right, it can, it yeah. can be a little hot. You know all house. those 72-year-olds with, with sick abs, abs, right? Dude, in terrible that, that, apartments. Take, take this, <laughs> listen, to put the camera on me. At 72 years old, I will have abs, okay? This is the word okay. I'm giving to you people, you 200, respect. 213 people. Respect. All right, let's keep it moving. Re Marcelo, most people want to retire comfortably. Marcelo says, Marcelo wants how abs. much do I need to, to retire <laughs> uncomfortably with abs? Sick. Okay. So um, just a quick little tips. Let's keep this thing moving right now. Um, so if you're not reaching these numbers, don't, don't feel bad. Don't but you need to start out. to make some money moves. Right. And if you're 20s, you can use the power of, you wait for it, compound interest to your advantage. That's the whole point of having employer-sponsored 401k. If you're not familiar with this, your employer usually provides a 401k with a match. Take the match, y'all. Uh, basically, a match is free money. So um, a, a lot of times employer will match up to 5% of your salary. So if you're sure. making 50 grand a year, 5% of that, 2,500 bucks, you put in 2,500, they put in 2,500. It's kind of like you scratch my back, 
I, I scratch, scratch your yours. back. I know that one. The funny thing about my back is. Hey. hey. <laughs> it's located. It's located. All, All right. right. Hey. Hey. Shout out Superbad. Shout out to Superbad. We were talking about that earlier. So, but, but if your employer doesn't have a uh, 401k, if you're freelancing or if you're in between gigs, you can set up an IRA and contribute to a fixed amount each month. And you can funnel that IRA into a low-cost stock index fund and make contributions. Basically, the IRA is the 401k for the self-employed. You know that I'm a huge fan of the Roth IRA. Roth and IRA, it's like two Jewish guys handling your money. <laughs> you know, like, that's, that's a good look if you're looking for people to handle your money. So that's a little sales tip for you. So keep, keep making those contributions into your 401k, and um, you're going to be all right. Now, listen, talking about... Um, Saving that money. Have you guys seen what's been going on in the NBA this week? I know, Tell David, are you an NBA fan? Uh, not as much as uh, soccer. You would think. Football. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Vanessa, NBA fan? Nope. Okay, so Marcelo, are you? <laughs> I am, I am. So this is going to be a me and you thing. <laughs> okay, let's this talk. This is going to be a me and you thing. Now, if you guys are fans of the. Oh, actually, this is what I'd love to hear. This, I, actually, I'm excited to see what comments, people put Comments, here. comments, comments. No, not even so much comments. If you're, a, if you're a basketball fan, throw a basketball emoji in there. If you're a football, not football American, football, soccer, throw football. a soccer ball emoji football. in there. I'd love to see if we're more international flavor or Amer more American. Throw, a, fo throw a, a soccer ball in there if you're more international flavor. Throw a uh, basketball if you're more NBA. I'd love to see where people come in with that. But here's the deal. These NBA teams have been handing out $100 million contracts like their Amazon gift cards. It's ridiculous. Let's run down the list here. Steph Curry, the greatest shooter of all time, agrees to a four-year, $215 million contract extension with Golden State Warriors. Trey Young, who killed it in the playoffs, sick point guard. He's kind of like the newer Steph Curry. He's agreed to a five-year, $207 million max extension with the Atlanta Hawks. He's age 22, by the way. 22, sitting on 207 million. Crazy. David, I believe you're 23. I am and you're 25. Sitting on 25. Okay, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Marcelo's 23. I apologize. Jimmy Butler from my hometown, Miami Heat, agrees to a four year deal for 185 million with the Miami Heat. Shea Gilgis Alexander, crafty point guard from OKC Thunder, age 23, signed a $172 million contract. Ridiculous. Then you get some other players. John Collins agrees to a five-year, $125 million contract with the Atlanta Hawks. Chris Paul, who killed it in the playoffs, got to the finals, lost to Giannis and the Bucks. He resigns another four-year deal up to $120 million. He's 36. Julius Randle on the Knicks, four-year, $117 million. He's age 26. Jared Allen, a player most people haven't even really heard of. He was a center for Brooklyn. He got He's got one of the Cleveland. best afros I've ever Sick seen. Sick afro. You're absolutely Sick afro. Right. He signed a $100 million deal. And my Miami Heat, they signed Kyle Lowry, uh, a sign and trade with um, the Toronto Raptors. He agrees to a three-year deal worth $90 million. And my boy, Duncan Robinson. Duncan Robinson. Sharp shooter from the Miami Heat, my guy. I texted him. He's my guy. I kick it with him. Did he answer? He, of course he answered. Okay, just wondering. About. He just said, wondering. thank you, broski. That's what he hit me with. There you go. With a, one of these emojis. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's rich, dude. It yeah. doesn't matter what he does. Exactly. Hit me one of those. <laughs> yeah, he he sent any emoji of them. He sent you a pineapple for all he cares. Exactly. He sent. He signed a five-year, ninety million dollar contract. It's the largest contract ever for an undrafted player. His story is ridiculous. We're gonna get him on the show one of these days to share his story. So all these players are just handing out, getting ridiculous contracts: hundred million, one hundred fifty million, ninety million. Ridiculous. Um, but then there's some players that kind of didn't really do uh -oh. what they were looking for. One player in particular on the Miami Heat, uh, his name is Victor Oladipo. He turned down a $45 million contract Pardon? last year with the Rockets. Gotcha. Got injured. Oh, boy. And now he's getting the veteran minimum to stay one year on the Heat, mm. which is probably, I don't know, $2 million bucks. Oof. So he lost $43 million. You know, they say bet on yourself, bro. Yeah. Bet on yourself. Sometimes, just, just take the money. <laughs> just take the money. Piece of advice. Yeah. Piece dollars. of advice, right? You know, maybe, have you ever sold yourself, uh, have you ever sold yourself long? <laughs> yeah, it happens sometimes. You just, you, you know, you bite off more than you can chew. You think you're better than you are. And Something um, happens. Yeah. You know, you, you didn't, you, you know, respect to him anyway. I think he's going to do great. And there's another guy called Dennis Schroeder. He turned down an $84 million contract Ooh. from the Lakers. $84 million, and he's mm -hmm. still a free agent. I bet you he is. No. 
Yeah, he's uh, kicking. Not himself. exactly happy that he turned down eighty four million. No. I'm sure he'll get. You know, it's like going back in time and missing out on Bitcoin. He ain't again. getting that exactly. So. What's crazy to me, Sauce, about this is yeah. that I'm seeing a lot of in the comments. Yeah. Are, 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 there's always that big question: Why do they go broke? Why do these basketball players they go broke? They have mm-hmm. so much money. I think that everybody in every business goes broke. They're just—it's not a big story. You know what I mean? Like I think back in the day, I remember Seinfeld. They, they interviewed Jerry Seinfeld. I know about comedy. Big mm-hmm. comedy nerd. They asked Seinfeld, they go, Seinfeld, what do you think about everybody thinking that comedians are depressed? And he goes, I think there's a lot of guys driving bread trucks that are depressed. <laughs> That's just not a story that makes it into the magazine. So I think the same thing happens with basketball players. Everybody goes broke. Lawyers go broke. Yeah. Doctors go broke. But it's not in the news as much because these guys, you know, they're in the front of the camera all the time. I agree. That's always like saying they say, why can't relationships work out in Hollywood? They always get divorced. Well, look at everybody else. 50% of the population gets divorced. Yeah, yeah. they're just not famous. They're in the headlines. They're in the headlines. Right. I like what you're saying. Right. Anytime you want to give a random Jerry Seinfeld quick little quip story, Do it's, it. it's encouraged. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. All right, real quick, just getting back to the comments. See a lot of basketball, a little basketball, some boxing. Okay. Um, some boxing. Uh, I think I see a volleyball there. I see one okay. soccer ball. I see a tennis ball. I see a lot of basketball, a lot of basketball, a lot of basketball, some soccer, some soccer, some football. Football. And um, Iverson, best basketball player, huge money issues. Yeah, I mean the the poster child for losing money is Antoine Walker. He made a hundred million over his career, spent it all on 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 on. And, and here are the things that they spend their money on. It's always the same things: mm-hmm. clothes, yep. jewelry, cars. Clothes, jewelry, cars. You know, money, cash, hose, money, cash, hose, clothes, class, jewelry, jewelry, cars. That, right. that that's just it is what it is. So save that money. I think we all understand that. All right, save that money. Um, we are approaching the five o'clock hour. We probably got I don't know I don't know fifteen minutes left, so we've we've spent a lot of time on Rihanna. We did we well did. worth it. Started a little late. Let's let's get into a couple quick stories, and you might be wondering, all right, how are these basco- uh, basketball owners paying all this ridiculous money for these players? Here's a story um, that teaches you about taxes and something called amortization. Scary word. Scary word. So here's an article from Pro Pro. Publica, it says it's the billionaire playbook how sports owners use their teams to avoid millions in taxes. Here it is. When I heard this, I was shocked, by the way. I I couldn't believe this. Here it is, little little behind the curtain, right? So amortization allows teams allows sports team owners to take nearly all of the team purchase price as a tax deduction. Here's how it works. By the way, we talked about amortization. It's which is the gradual reduction of debt over a period of time. Let's say, for example, you purchase a sports team for two billion, just two billion. Steve Ballmer, I, I believe, um, bought the LA Clippers. Steve Ballmer was um, Microsoft guy, right? Microsoft. Bill Gates. He was the intrapreneur. Uh, he became CEO after Bill Gates, and uh, he bought the Clippers. And he's the guy going crazy on the sidelines, but they just seem can't seem to win. Um, <laughs> so basically, let's say you buy a team for two billion. Um, typically about 90% of that purchase price or 1.8 billion if you're doing math is amortizable. Amort- amortizable. Amortizable. Huh? <laughs> amortizable. 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 It's a tough word, I swear to God. I mean, even financial experts over here have tough. Am- amortization. Amortizable. Let's call it um, the tax deduct- let's, let's, deductible. Let, let's call know. it mort. Mort. Hey, mort. mort. You, you can mort it. it. Hey, mort that. Hey, mort. Mort that. Which means it's treated like an asset that loses value over time. Do you hear that? It's an asset that loses value over time, much like some real estate sometimes, mm-hmm, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That can be expensed, a.k.a. write-offs. That means under the tax code over the next 15 years, you can claim a $120 million expense for your sports team for your, for your sports team each year. Let's say your sports team makes $50 million per year, and you have other sources of income that add that add $150 million on top of that. Normally, you'd pay almost 40% of your income in taxes. We understand that ta- they'll be in the top tax bracket, 40%. There it is. However, with amortization, you can remove $120 million from your income, which means you don't have to pay taxes on it. Then you only pay taxes on the rest. You save about $45 million in taxes each year or $650 million over, 50, over 15 years. In some cases, owners can write off even more than 90% of the purchase price. Anyways, we're learning things here. We're learning about taxes. We're learning about Mort, our friend Amortization. There you go. Hey, Mort. Morty. We're, lear- we're learning how these NBA owners can just write these hundred million dollar checks like it's nothing, because they got taxes. So I go to this. I go to this. Um, 
Here's a little sauce tip for you. So I started my career being like the networking guy, right? I was a sales guy, and they're like, we're doing a con- every my company would do a sponsor like a financial conference every year, and who wants to go? I'm there. I'll go. I'll go. I'll network. I'll meet people. And there was a there's a conference uh, here in Florida. It's in Orlando. It's called the Heckerling Institute for Estate Planning Conference. Mm. Heckerling, and it's sponsored by University of Miami Law School. Anyway, this conference it's all about estate. Planning. Are you familiar with estate planning? Estate planning, there's something called the estate tax, okay. right? We all pay taxes. It comes out of your paycheck. We talk about taxes. We talk about Social Security. There's something called the estate tax. And basically, the tax threshold is $20 million right now, just a roundabout. Meaning, if your tax, if your net worth, if your estate is less than $20 million, you're what is known as exempt. Exempt. You don't have to pay anything. Here's the kicker. If your estate is worth more than $20 million, so let's say it's worth a hundred million. You have a hundred million dollar estate. Um, the t- first twenty million dollars is exempt, and then the remaining eighty million is taxed at almost fifty percent. Mm. So that means you might owe forty million dollars in estate taxes Yikes. to the government. It's it should be it's called the death tax. Mm. <laughs> so so growing up in Miami. Do you remember what the stadium, the Dolphin Stadium, used to be called when you were a kid? Joe Robbie? Joe Robbie Stadium. Do you ever wonder what happened to Joe Robbie and why it's no longer Joe Robbie Stadium? No. Because Joe Robbie didn't (laughs) believe in life insurance. He probably should have had hundreds of millions of life insurance. So what a lot of savvy financial advisors and estate planners do, that's they do at this conference at the Heckerling, they get life insurance and trusts and irrevocable trusts and islets and revocable trusts and trustees. And it's just, just like... The, the point is there's the, this conference. It's, it's all the richest of the richest of the richest estate planners. They go to learn all the tax loopholes that you should be aware mm. of. And every year they talk about here are the, the biggest mistakes in the estate planning. And it's like people like James and Brown what's, when he died. You say estate planning a yeah. lot. Um, what's like a simple word for estate planning? Like, like death- all, all your net worth. Yeah. Everything is just bundled into your estate. Okay, cool. Your estate. So, so money planning, like money planning, planning your money. Yes. It's all one big fancy money planning. Okay, exactly. cool. I think okay, money plan. Okay, so exactly. they talk about these are the these are the ways that we can jump through hoops to get out of taxes oh, bro, for it's money the planning. Circus. They are jumping through hoops like What's, it's Ringling Brothers, bro. And, and 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 these are all very rich, rich people. But like Beyond. the average person, you know, let's say no, the average he's person, a young kid. the average person is not worth one million. The average person is not worth twenty million. So they're they're exempt. It's the uh. it's the one percent of the one percent who are worth more than twenty million. They gotta have estate planning, and they have trusts and trustees and islets, which stands for an irrevocable life insurance trust. Jesus, we won't get too much into it. So the point is, Joe Robbie, like you brought up, you know, he was worth three hundred million. The team was worth three hundred million at the time he died, and they went to his family. They go, hey, great, you know, the first twenty million is exempt. It's probably lower back then. So, um, you owe us. 200, uh, 280 million divided by two, so 140 million dollars. How would you like to pay? And they're like, what, "What are you talking about?" They're like, "Yeah, the estate tax that everyone knows about when you're rich. The, the government wants <laughs> half their half your shit. What's up?" And they're like, "They're like, how you want to pay for this?" And rich people will do this through life insurance trusts. Uh, you know, they loopholes. find a million ways to keep the money. Exactly. They, you know, passing it down, charitable trusts. It's a whole crazy world out there and they go do you have any life insurance and they go no they go well your only recourse is to sell the team it's your only asset so he had to sell the team he sold Mm -hmm. it to a wayne Heizinga who started blockbuster i believe um and then they gave all the cash to the government and yeah he had to give half the cash to the government and then they cashed out and they sold their whatever the team was but the point is there's failures in estate planning if you google it like Whitney Houston, she died, didn't have an estate plan, right? Mm. James Brown died, didn't have an estate plan. So a piece of advice. Yeah. Think about it, yeah, right? You're, everyone's going to die, and it's just how much taxes are you going to owe when you die? And even if so, but, but if you're not worth $20 million, you're probably good? Oh, you are good. Oh, you're good. It's, it's, that's why it's called exempt. Exempt? You're exempt. Yeah, I'm not worth $20 million, no. right? Okay? Like, I just got, I got $1 million. I got one. You got one. But I don't have 20. <laughs> you got a right? million. You got one. Uh, I, I got one. <laughs> I got one single milli chilling like you know i'm not the multi-millionaire i'm doing all right okay so i'm not worried about it right now right. but i have friends like i have a good friend i won't say his name but he has killed it in the real estate game this year absolutely killed it and 
we were talking about getting him some life insurance. We were going about to get him, you know, a couple million bucks of life insurance. Not a big deal when you're young. Life insurance isn't that expensive. But um, now he made so much money this past year. I think he made like 10 million bucks, maybe even more. I'm like, you got to start thinking about this estate tax. Mm. He goes, oh, I heard about that. I'm like, oh, you go, you gonna learn today? <laughs> yeah. So um, hopefully he's watching the sauce cast. He will. He will. He calls me on the cell. So anyway, uh, we are approaching. Almost one hour. We'll probably go another 10 minutes. We won't go much longer than 5.15 today. David's got some place to go. He's got a mustache appointment. So let's get a couple <laughs> stories in. Um, hey, maintenance is, is big, Maintenance dude. is key. Hey, how you doing back there? With you? <laughs> if your mustache could talk, what would it sound yeah, like? Yeah, seriously. It would talk, talk like this. Ah. <laughs> something like the pimple on the back of my neck sounds like. I'll a gigantic pimple, and that's what it sounds like. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's talk about this story because it's coming out. Anyway, so that's that's a little state planning. Did you learn something today about estate planning? I learned something today about estate planning, but I learned that I, I, I really need to work on making more money. And then, uh, that's <laughs> yeah. what I really learned. It's not a problem you have right now. Yeah, no, but, 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 well. but let me ask you something, Zoss. For the regular person, for somebody that's just, you know, yeah. let's, let's, let's call him a young cat. Not, not yeah. worth a lot of money. Let's young, say y- Young cats and kittens out there. Yeah, th- go ahead. Is there, what do you recommend in terms of taxes like is there a way that we can jump through some little tiny hoops to it's, a, it's a great question so most people um are w-2 employees okay so there's not a lot you can do that's trouble but, no it is what it is like that's how you get paid that's it is what it is like you're, you're w-2 employee correct like, like your taxes are deducted there's no write-offs like correct. you're gonna take what's called the standard deduction when taxes not a cpa this is not tax advice no no not tax just advice, giving yeah. you just but if you work on your personal, personal brand, brand, right, 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 boom, come back, and you start your own company, maybe it's an LLC or an S corp. Like, I'm a actual W two employee for my financial firm. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, what's called a highly compensated employee because mm-hmm. I make work off commissions. So, but I'm an employee. I, they take taxes. I can't do anything about it. Right. You know. But I started my company, SOS Money. There you go. And it's an S corp, and I can do write offs. And the first couple of years, it was just a startup, not not making any money. So you can, um, you basically, you can write off startup expenses, like you're starting up your comedy right, career. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. for all friends out there that are starting their own companies, or, their a, own personal or a side brands, hustle, side hustle, go get incorporated. Um, then you can write off like stuff like you food, can write off, yeah, gas, exactly, food, entertainment, you know, gas certain percentage of your rent. There's a lot of different stuff with that. Maybe we'll get a tax advisor and come and talk about that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, look into that stuff. We'll look into that. Like, well, wh- What we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to bring experts on. The first couple shows here, by the way, if you're listening, it's just us. It's just us. Next show, I'm actually going to be with Patrick and Patrick Bet David at his, at his company, PHP, in Vegas. So we won't be doing it live. So just there's going to be probably more pre-recorded. But after that, we're going to have guests on. We're going to have experts on. We're going to have financial advisors on. We're going to have CPAs on. We're going to have professional basketball players on. We're going to have all sorts of people to help you learn the ropes on different things. Cool? Stick with sauce, kids. Stick with sauce, guys. We're coming. just getting started. Sauce Nation is out there. We're here for you. All right, let's get in real quick. Here's a story that I think is going to be hot off the presses over the next 48 hours. We'll see what happens here. Um, I'm talking about the one and only Kanye West. Mm. Kanye West he is former presidential candidate. Former presidential, former candidate, presidential yes. candidate. Um, he's basically paying one million dollars a day to live where in the Atlanta Stadium, the Mercedes-Benz Football Stadium. Sorry, he's what it's called. He's, he's a paying a million dollars a day. Kanye West has undoubtedly gone above and beyond to make music, and he is currently living inside the Mercedes Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta to complete his new album Donda which I believe is the name of his late mother, and he's sacrificing his comfort and reportedly costing him a fortune. Apparently, he's paying $1 million a day, and Marcelo had a great joke. He says it's the most expensive downgrade slash (laughs) upgrade that you could possibly make. So because he's living uh, in this $2 million, 2 million square foot building, a huge stadium. Insane. But basically, he's set up a little residence, a temporary residence, in one of the locker rooms, converting it into a recording studio to finish the recording and mixing with Mike Dean. Um, 
and they took a look at his bedroom, and it's a one little tiny bedroom with a single bed, a flat screen TV, and a digital clock hanging on the wall. Just Kanye doing Kanye type things. Insane. And um, he's paying fifty cents a square foot. Fifty cents a day. Fifty cent. A fifty cent reference in a Kanye. Um, so is he saving that money? Absolutely he's not. not. No, he's, he's, absolutely he's not saving that, that money. That's how much money the, you have. Uh, Kanye, if there's anything about Kanye, musical genius, would you agree? I feel yes. like that word gets thrown around too much. Yo, genius. Dude, I the don't guy, know. he's a certified Bro. crazy person. His music <laughs> is. He's got albums on for, albums yes. that are crazy. Like College it's, dropout, it's undou- undoubtedly, yes, undoubtedly musical genius. I, don't I won't even go down the list of his songs, but he's ridiculous. Yeah. But he ain't saving that money apparently no. in his rent these days. Not a financial genius. What's the most amount of money you would you've ever spent uh, on a vacation? Like on meaning vacation? to stay at a hotel. Most amount for the for those of us listening in the audience, most amount you've ever spent to stay at a hotel. Let's see it in the comments too. Um, yeah. For me, it's uh, probably uh, two and a half grand. Whoa. Really? Yeah, nice. Okay. Ho- I, when I go on vacation, I like a nice hotel. I like to indulge. Wait, two, I don't want to be like you know. Two and a half grand on how many nights? Two nights. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it was, it was a, uh, maybe four nights. Okay. 500 bucks a night. That's crazy. Okay. Like that. Most of money you ever spent. Now. I, <laughs> like, maybe 200 or 300 on a, on, on a hotel. On, on a hotel, and I didn't, I'm didn't. i not even going to pay for it. I'm going to write it off. So I'm going to write it yeah, off. I'm going to write it off. Yeah, because you travel around the country. You know, what's funny is I don't think I've spent a lot of money in hotels because I, I get them paid for. Like from work, like I travel a lot for business. Right, you're conferences. the networking guy. They no, send dude, you. I've stayed at the Ritz Carlton's. Oh, I've stayed at the you. Montage in L.A. Oh gosh. And I've I haven't really the probably the most I've ever paid is when I was with my ex, fiance, whatever. We won't go there, but we went to Europe <laughs> for a month. We were oh, we were boy. we're doing Airbnbs, but you know I saved that money on Airbnb. Airbnb, if you're staying long term, way better than a hotel kidding me is there a vacation tax write-off do you get like a little vacay i don't think you get vacation no, huh? tax write-off i don't when we talk to our cpa we'll yeah, we gotta ask say. him those questions look All at right. this Some silly people... white boy spent 5k you silly white boy <laughs> marcus garvey 500 what's up marcus justin 1k juan garcia 700 bucks for three nights all right you know who actually what's funny um the biz doc we all know biz doc from biz right? value tammy does his case studies he says you know i came here I, you know because he travels and he goes you know i I, I got a rule. I'm not paying more than $200 a night for a hotel. Yes, that's Biz his Doc. rule. Yes. And he basically was like, save that money. Save that money, Biz Doc. And he's like, that's my rule. If I'm by myself, I, that's my rule. 200 bucks max. Max. If I'm with my family, I'll spend whatever it is. Sure. And I, I actually have a very similar philosophy. If I'm going yeah. out, if I'm with a girl, and we're going on a date or we're traveling, I'll, got I'll pay. It. Like, I'll, yeah. like, it's all good. It's like, it goes with, if I'm by myself or I'm with the homies, Bro, we'll go. Let's go eat Subway. Like I don't you're, care. You're living like Kanye when you're. On I'm your just own. saying, like, there's certain times you need to save that money. Yeah. And, like, and with the boys, you you don't you know you don't yeah. pay for your boys. You split it. You, you split it. You split it, or you yeah. get some guy to split it, and then everybody Venmo's him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, something. I, I split it with me, the girl too. I'm not paying that. Oh, you're <laughs> splitting with the girl. Okay, <laughs> I respect. Well, well, that's a whole other topic. Yeah, that's a whole day. No, I'm something kidding. Something tells no, me. I'll, I'll get it, Marcelo. Yeah. That you would. In retirement, live anywhere uncomfortably if you had sick abs. Something told me that yeah. you would just as long as I've got the abs. I mean, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quote something very old here, Sauce. I'm sure you've heard it because you are very old. Um, <laughs> he- <laughs> health is wealth, ladies health and gentlemen. Is wealth. That's true. So wow. that's true. you know what? Okay. If I'm in a shack but I got abs, don't worry about me. That's true. That's true. Um, We'll save a couple other stories for the next episode. The next episode will be next Thursday. Now, as we do every episode, we're going to get into your Q&A, and we're going to answer some of the trending topics. Um, every Thursday before the show, I do a Q&A on my Instagram, Sauce Talks Money. If you're not following me on Instagram, you got to do that so you can ask these questions so we can answer your questions. And by the way, if you're not subscribed to Value Tainment, go ahead and do that now. Go ahead. If you're not subscribed to the Saucecast and Value Tim and Economics, go ahead and do that now. It's only the beginning, baby. It's only the beginning. We're just getting started. We got David here. We got Marcelo here. We're going to be here more often. We're answering your questions. This show is all about you. What I love about personal finance, it's your money. Personal, you, finance, money. Personal finance, your money. This whole show is about personal finance. We're going to have value, and we're going to have that attainment. We're going to have that attainment. So here's some of your questions. I have not. I, I, I've printed them out. I do not have anything scripted. I'm just going to go one by one. 
There's about 15 questions here. We'll try to fire away real quick. If you guys have any quick responses that you want to chime in on, go ahead. But here's some of the questions. What's a rookie mistake someone in their 20s can make with their money? This is from Jonas A4K. A rookie mistake that someone can make in their 20s. My answer would be not understanding that you're going to be 25, you're going to be 30, you're going to be 35, you're going to be 40 like your boy saws here, you're going to be 50, and just blowing it all and going hard at age 27 and thinking there's no tomorrow. It's a myopic view of life. You're going to be 25. You're going to be 30. Save that money. Don't like you're going to there's going to the, there's always going to be time to party. Marcelo, you're in your 20s. David, in your 20s. How many I mean, how many of your friends are just going ham? Yeah, dude. I mean, sometimes it's daddy's money. You know what I mean? Sometimes you yeah, can't you can't really count. fight against that. But nope. Um, yeah, some people are, you know, you're, you're chasing that clout, baby. There's a lot of people chasing that clout right now. Chasing that clout. Young yeah, people yeah, chasing I, clout. Okay. I agree. I got a couple of friends doing the same thing. Some yeah. friends saving that money. Yep. Other friends blowing that money. Yeah. So be, people think, you know, I want to live my life in my 20s, live my best life because when I got old, I can't put... Dude, you're going to be 30 and that's still young. 40 still young. People are living to 100. We talked about Social Security. These people used to die at age 65. My grandma's 90. She's doing great. Like, life is long. Save that money. You're going to need it in the future. We talked about how much money you need to save for retirement. Here's a question from True Dreamer 93 Is buying permanent life insurance worth it before age 30? Uh, here's my thoughts on life insurance. General view. Why do you need life insurance? You need life insurance. It's basically like, holy shit, what just happened insurance? Just in case insurance. So you need insurance for two reasons. God forbid you die. Who's going to take care of your family if you've got kids or a wife? Or if you have a business, who's going to pay for the business expenses to keep the business going? Here, I'll be honest with you. I don't have life insurance. I'll need to get it when I have kids. But if you don't have kids, there's no necessarily reason. Now, people will say that the flip side of that is the younger you get it, the cheaper it will be. I get that. But my philosophy is buy term and invest the difference. There are some good permanent products. So with life insurance, it's called term or perm. Term is like renting. Perm is like buying a house. Perm, it's up to you. Term is way cheaper. Permanent is way more expensive. You can grow cash value. There's whole life. There's IUL. There's UL. There's VUL. I know this stuff like the back of my hand. Um, but if you don't have kids and you don't necessarily have a business, you don't necessarily need life insurance. So the question, True Dreamer, is buying permanent insurance worth it before 30? It depends on your situation. Do you have kids? You let me know. You want to chime in there? Uh, no, I know okay. nothing about that. Gotcha. <laughs> um, question from Sar Warl Elias. I hope I didn't butcher your name. What's your morning routine? Do you make time for yourself or do you just get to work? Dude, my whole thing. What time do I get in the office? Uh, it, it depends. It's early. Sometimes it's Sometimes it's afternoon. what time? Sometimes it's 8. Sometimes it's 8. Sometimes it's 12. Noonish. Okay. Yeah. So every morning I will either stretch and do yoga or stretch yoga workout every, every morning, morning. Stretch, i drink yoga. water i chug a whole thing of water first thing in the morning i say while i'm stretching i do what is called an affirmation mm. i basically mm. i'm like you can do whatever you want to do you're 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 healthy you're building your wealth you're working on your happiness your your body is healthy uh, your mind is focused your soul is calm i say these positive things wow. you can do whatever you want to do i say these positive things positive things I, I, I express gratitude. I, I say what I'm thankful for. I do this. I listen to like kind of yoga-ish music mm. and while I'm doing my stretching. And then when I work out, boom, the hip hop or maybe some like EDM comes on and I'm getting after it. But I do that in the morning and just try to be healthy in the morning. So morning routine. Yes, I do have a morning routine. Tips for a 21-year-old, one year of college left who wants to be a financial advisor. This is from Junior Hodes 405. Tips for a 21-year-old with one year of college left who wants to be a financial advisor. Here's what I'll tell you. If you're 21 and you actually know what you want to be, huge. you're ahead of the game, bro. Yeah. You're ahead of the game. Like, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I, I don't think I knew what I wanted to be until, like, five years ago. I was like, oh, I'm actually – I've made money. I'm actually an expert at this. Let me work on my personal brand. All right, I'm doing this. Boom, doubling down. At 21, man. 21 to 26, I was the jack of all trades. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know what's more important than finding out what you want to be? Finding out what you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually went to take my LSATs. I was going to law school. Mm. In the middle of the LSATs, I, I freaked out. Like, I can't do this shit. I, and I, and I, that's it. I never you looked quit. back. Quit. In the middle of the LSATs. 
There was like a someone tapping, someone tapping. I'm looking around. There was a squeaky chair. I'm like, that's really annoying. My OCD was kicking in. You know about that? And I said, I'm not allowed. This reading thing. By the by the way, by the way, Sosnick yeah. just blames Sosnick just blames everything on OCD. Like like <laughs> like, anytime he's uncomfortable, he's like, yeah, my, my OCD's, OCD's kicking in. in. I'm getting bored. It's like no, people just get bored. Sosnick, like, <laughs> everybody gets bored. It's easy. It's like a lot of people blaming their stuff on ADD, ADD, ADD. ADD. I, that's anyway, that's my anyway. Thing. So my tip for a 21 year old who knows he wants to be a financial advisor, awesome. Now go find, go talk to financial advisors, go find out what companies you could work for. If you know what you want to be at 21, you're ahead of the game. Most people don't know what they want to do. It's a respect. Um, this is from Real Devin Pratt. He says thoughts on buying investment rental properties to build wealth. If you love real estate and you love fixing stuff and you love collecting rent and you love being handy <laughs> and you love Amortization, <laughs> yeah, yeah. then that's for you. Me, can't screw in a light bulb. Yeah. Me, I like to travel a lot. I'm not a real estate guy. Yeah. I rent, I take all that money. Like we talked about with life insurance, buy term, invest the difference. I rent, I save a ton of money, and I invest the difference. You know, there's different ways to build wealth real estate, um, stocks, crypto, businesses. Just do what you like. So if you're not into real estate, there's no problem with that. Now I'll give one caveat. I invest in something called REITs. REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust, allows you to invest in real estate without actually having to own a rental property or house. Mm -hmm. So if you're into real estate and you love it, like you're gonna have to double down on that. You yeah. don't dabble in real estate, no. okay? You're gonna have to hire a, uh, a landlord or um, a property manager. You're gonna have to have a guy. My mom does real estate. She has a guy. Like if anything happens, she's gotta yeah. call the guy. Well, n it's not even a guy. It's guys. If you own a house or a rental property, you gotta have guys. You gotta have a pool guy, a, a maintenance yeah, but, guy, but, a handy guy, a it, lawn guy, yeah, but a you, toilet you, guy, a plumber guy. You can find a guy though. There's gotta. There, there's a guy. It all? There's a guy out there that's just Jack a savage. Of all trades. Okay, that's true. In Miami, that's that's, that's Miami. Yes, you know it's a Cuban guy. It's oh, like, absolutely. I, I get the guy. <laughs> of it, bro. The toilet's broken. I fix it. Oh no, is the is the garage? Nah, I fix it too. <laughs> like he can do he can do anything. Yeah, but what about the refrigerator? Uh, <laughs> oh, the fridge? No, okay, no, I, I said it. fridge. I got, I got. It. Um, all right. Well, actually, this is a perfect caveat. Real estate. This is from G O L R twenty four. Thank you guys for hitting up my Saws Talks Money Instagram and asking these questions. They says rank one through three in terms of importance. Real estate stocks crypto i'll say for me it's stocks real estate then crypto crypto is probably five percent of my net worth despite not owning real estate i do own real estate trust but to each their own i know people that don't mess with the stock market they don't believe it and they love real estate and believe me if you've ever seen any of my man on the street stuff on value tame and economics there's people that are all about yeah. The crypto. There's people that own that have 99 percent of their wealth yeah. in crypto. I'm a, it's a little I'm risky a, to me. I'm a Sosnick student right now. I got I'm, I'm I go savings mm -hmm. and then stocks and that's it. There you go. I got nothing else. Cash, savings, stocks, cash. Um, what's your favorite investment book or course? You know, it's something that I I've read a bunch of money books, investing books. Something that just made it like I read it and I was like, okay, I got it now. I don't I don't need to be this guru of all things. It's actually pretty simple. And it was the Bogleheads Guide to Investing. It's written or based on the the beliefs of Jack Bogle. Jack Bogle was the founder of Vanguard. Mm -hmm. They're the largest mutual fund in the world. They're, you know, he's the big believer in index investing, sort of the, the granddaddy of that. And that worked for me. But I will say another book that I love was uh, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Amazing book, helps you manifest what you're thinking and how to win friends and influence people. And then for business books, you know I'm gonna give it a shout out to my guy, PBD. PBD. Uh, your next, your next five, five moves. Next five moves, gotta um, read it. When are you opening up, so Black Rock Trader says, when are you opening up the phone lines for the podcast that is happening? Probably episode four or five. Yeah. But um, we're gonna be taking your calls. We're gonna be taking your calls. Um, best investment for tax-free wealth. We talked about this earlier. This is from Daniel. Or Sornio, Roth IRA, bro. You'll never get taxed on that again. That is after tax dollars. When you retire, you owe zero in taxes. What's the worst type of person to have in the CEO seat? You know, mm. that's a good question. The worst type of person to have in the CEO seat. Here's what I'll say. There's a difference between a boss and a leader. Okay, right now I work for a leader, Patrick mm. Bet David. He's a full-on leader, and uh, I've worked for people who are 
bosses. And the difference is between a boss and a leader is a leader is hammer, hammer, hug. Mm-hmm. A boss is hammer, hammer, hammer. Yeah. That shit gets old real quick. I, I also feel like there's a, the, the two words that come to mind is it feels like a boss is somebody you work for. Yeah. And then a leader is somebody you work with. Oh, dropping dimes here on the sauce guy. Thank you, Marcelo. Um, how much per paycheck should you put into savings, paying off debt, and use for fun? I love that question. That's from Luke Hauser. There's something called the 50 30 20 rule mm. 50% of your paycheck should go to your needs. 30% can go to your wants and 20% should go to your savings and or paying off debt. Google 50, 30, 20 rule if you want to learn more about that. Uh, similar question. This is from Sparsh K00. He says, save that money, invest that money, or pay off debt. So I have something called the six principles of wealth, and I'll run through them real quick. Number one is having a game plan for your money. That's a budget. Number two is paying off your debt. Your debt is your money going backwards, especially high interest rates, high interest debt, credit cards, 20%, cars, 25%, and whatever it is, it's insane. Pay it off. Number three, save that money. You save up 10 grand to have a cushion, an emergency fund before you start investing. Then you can start to invest and build your wealth over time. Then you can insure, protect your wealth, you know, we talked about life insurance. Last but not thing, you're chilling. So um, depends on where you're at, but paying off debt, get that shit out of your life, save that money so that you can start investing. Um, he also asks, what do you think about investing in gold right now? Gold, silver, they... They're, Kiyosaki said something yeah, about this. Yeah, Kiyosaki. Recently. We'll talk, we'll cover Kiyosaki yeah, on, the Ki- next, yeah. on the next episode. Yeah. Um, favorite food? I got to go with sushi. I got to go with sushi. What's your favorite food? Favorite food? That's from uh, Joanne, definitely by Definitely Vietnamese pho. Vietnamese pho? pho. I meant uh, that my last meal. Um, you can't say Chipotle, bro. No, no, no. Favorite food to say? Pho. Don't like to eat it. Like to say it. <laughs> pho. Let's have some pho. Favorite food to eat? Um, sushi, dude. I'm going to go with you. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go to Sushi Pop. Maybe we go get sushi after this. <laughs> Count me in. Okay. And uh, last question. What sports did you play as a kid? Um... Anything with a ball, I dominated. Basketball, football, baseball. I was actually pretty decent at soccer. I was good with balls. Anything, that's a joke right there. Um, I'm sure, people were making jokes. Anything with a board, horrible. Yeah. You're not too shabby at a cornhole. That's a board I'm and a bag. Yeah, it's, I'm good at corn. Ping pong, I'm good at. Tennis, I'm good at. Uh, anything with a board, wakeboarding, surfing, skateboarding, so weird. skiing, snowboarding, You'd think Horrible. someone that's such a dominant athlete would I don't have know. balance, but it, I guess It just not. didn't work out. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for the questions. Thank you guys for staying tuned. Thank you, David, for doing what you do. Thank you. Clap it up out there. Proverbial clap for Marcelo. The You're going to hear more claps. from this guy. I hope that you got some value from all this, and I hope that you were tamed here on Valuetainment. Were you not (laughs) Valuetained? Anyway, (laughs) thank you guys for being a part of the Sazcast this week. We'll see you next Thursday. Enjoy your weekend. And remember, save that money.